We're going to be trying to build uh, some ramps into a couple of our saints' homes that uh, need ramps built. And um, Brother Billy, Sister Dorothy need one built at their house. And um, uh, Sister Debbie and Tiffany need one built at their house. And because of Brother Billy, um, ongoing stay in the hospital, we'll probably do uh, Sister Debbie Nims first because they are, can immediately start using it. And uh, I really want us to pray before we, when after I read my text, we're going to pray. I want us to really pray for Brother Billy. He definitely needs a lot of help to uh, begin to respond to whatever therapy they're going to try to do. He's definitely um, very weak and, um, and really pray for Sister Dorothy to have the strength to continue to minister to him because it's definitely a challenge and I really want your prayers. I appreciate those of you that have uh, called and, and that are concerned and go by and visit, whatever you can do to, to just let them know that we're pulling for him and we're praying for him. He's God. So God bless you. And God, Sister Gwen, thank you for going by. That was very, a very beautiful visit. They appreciated that. Thank God. Have your Bibles, Genesis 28, verse number 16. And Jacob woke out of his sleep, and <coughs> he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? And uh, that's really a, a bad word for our dispensation. At the time that it was used, it was a good word. But um, another translation says it like this, Shaking, he said, How awesome is this place? Thank hey God. Yeah, that's what it really meant. Dreadful there is not a bad dreadful. It was a, it's just an, an awesome place. Thank God. It just a surprised him that God was in this place. And this is none other than but the house of God. And this is the gate to heaven. Thank God. And then verse number 19, and he called the name of the place Bethel, but the name of the city was called Luz at first. And, of course, Bethel meant the house of God. Verse number 20, and Jacob vowed a vow and saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in the way that I go, I will give um, and give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And the stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And all of them that, that thou shalt give me, I will surely give thee a tenth unto thee. And then um, Genesis um, 32 and verses 7 and 24 and 26. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that were with him, that the flocks and the herds and the camels, into two bands. And Jacob was alone, and, went, and, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. I want to preach from this thought this morning. It's a two-part message. You'll have to come back tonight to hear the second part of the message. But the first part of the message is two encounters with God. Two encounters with God. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you can help us to have an encounter here today with you. I pray that some way we can inspire something in the Holy Ghost that will want us to have a divine encounter. And we ask you to bless it and help it. And we ask your anointing to come in Jesus' name. Thank God. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you for worship. Thank God. Have your lovely way. Have your lovely way. What a difference it makes. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. God bless you. May be seated. What a difference worship makes. It feels so much better after really worshiping a while and receiving his word than we would just receiving his word without having worship and prepared our hearts for his word. Thank God. In Genesis 28, Jacob uh, has his first encounter with God. Now, he had heard about God through Abraham and Isaac, but he had never really experienced him. All through the Bible, you know, it says uh, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and eventually it's going to say the God of Jacob. But right now, it's not the God of Jacob. Thank God. It's the God of Abraham and of Isaac. But uh, at this point, he was a long ways from where God would really want him to be. Now, he wanted the, the blessing, and he had heard about the blessing, and he knew that there was something special about uh, the blessing that Abraham had received from God and that Abraham had passed to Isaac and now had been passed to him, even though he had deceived his dad and he had stole the birthright. He knew that he wanted that birthright because he knew there was something very special about that. But he had never really met with God himself. 
Now that he is on the run for his life, and it looks like that everything has um, backfired on him. You know, he just figured he would get the birthright and, and that would settle it. But obviously his brother was upset at him, was going to kill him, and so uh, he had to run. And so he has um, uh, really got himself into a, a bad situation. And the reason he is in the place is that he was living up to his name. And, of course, his name was a supplanter or deceiver. Or in our day, you could just say he knew how to twist the truth real good, better known as lying. And, uh, and so he could uh, get what he wanted, and he was always looking out for himself. And so he had deceived his dad, and he had uh, taken his brother's birthright, and now his brother is out to kill him, and he's on the run. And as God would have it, he stops at this place where that um, uh, he is going to rest. And you know, God has ways of getting us where he wants us to be. And sometimes when we have situations in life that begin to overwhelm us and, and we begin to run from all of the uh, problems and perplexities that life can put up on us, uh, it's amazing how that God can use that time as a way to really get us focused on him. Jacob's life was spinning out of control, much like our world today, much like um, everyone that's looking for somebody with an answer. And, of course, now we're in a, another political season. I think it stays political season. But anyway, you know, people thinking that some president's going to change things or whatever. But, you know, the government's not the answer. Thank God, the schools are not the answer. The only answer is the house of God. You know, there's something about the house of God. When everything else is going wrong, I can get to the house of God. And it seems as though that God is the only one that can really fix a life that is spinning out of control. He can take our situations in life that seem to uh, just happen. And, you know, life will just happen to all of us. And sometimes we've got to be careful that we don't get down in the dumps because life is happening to us. Praise God. I mean, we're going to have problems, we're going to have situations, and we're going to have bills, and we're going to have um, uh, layoffs, or whatever, all in life's different little situations. And I want to understand that, hey, that's just life. Thank God, it's happening to the sinner just like it's happening to the saint. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. And so I want to be careful that I don't go to thinking, well, God, what's wrong? Well, where, where's God at? Thank God, God's where he's always been. He's in control and everything's going to be all right. And you just need to relax and just say, hey, this just happens to be my day to have a bitter cup. But tomorrow uh, the, the sweet cup will come back. And so I'm just going to hang in there and, and press on. And Jacob had no idea that God was fixing to show up and would never forget uh, that moment that was fixing to happen. Jacob had a dream of a ladder that was descending from heaven and angels ascending and descending on the, the throne on the ladder. And it was an, a, a wonderful dream and it was an inspiring dream. And suddenly he just felt um, strength that he didn't know that he could get. And so Jacob had no idea that God was going to meet with him in special way, special way. God made some promises to Jacob that if he would, that he would going to bless him and that he was going to take care of him and that he wouldn't leave him. And, of course, Jacob is still Jacob. And so when Jacob wakes up, he says, Surely, you know, the Lord is in this place. So he called the place Bethel or the house of God. And he says, um, This is an, uh, an awesome place. This is a tremendous place. Thank God. And then he began to, and he had this wonderful experience. And he is not afraid anymore. And he has a peace about where he's heading. He feels like that God's hand is upon him. But he's really not changed very much. Because the first thing that Jacob says, he says, Now, God, if you will take care of me and if you'll feed me and if you'll get clothes on my back and you will um, bring me back in peace and everything, he said, then, then you'll be my God. Praise God. We'll make a deal. Hey, God. And, you know, it's kind of like a lot of them Jews. They like to make deals. Well, he was, got it honest from Abraham. You know, he was a willing dealer, you know, with God. He bargained for Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and so Jacob, you know, he's bargaining with God. Thank God that God would be his God. If he would just um, take care of him and that he'd pay his tithes. Thank God. Now, God kept the end of his bargain because 20 years later, when Jacob's coming back, he's loaded down with goods. He's been blessed in so many ways. Thank God. I don't know if Jacob kept his end of the bargain about paying his tithes or not, but God kept his end of the bargain. And Jacob is aware that um, he needs an encounter with God. Because he's going back home. The Lord told him or he felt impressed that he needed to go back home. I don't read a lot about Job's 
or Jacob's relationship with God during these 20 years that he's down at Laban's house. And, of course, um, he gets some of his own medicine. You remember how that Laban deceived him and he worked seven years for um, his Rachel and wound up getting Leah and then uh, had to work seven more years to get the wife he wanted. And then after that, he had to work six years to get his cattle and things. And so uh, he kind of got a taste of his own medicine in being deceived and uh, things. But Jacob... Uh, is decided to go back home. And soon as he gets close to home, he finds out that Esau is coming out with a thousand men against him or a thousand servants and people against him. And so he's very afraid and he's scared. And he realizes, I need to have an encounter with God. I remember that first encounter. I was afraid. I was scared. I was running scared. But I got along with God. And God reassured me of my promises. And so 20 years later, He is at his wit's end, and he makes up his mind that he has got to have an encounter with God. And he remembers that first encounter that God had, that he had got alone. And so he gets everybody away, puts everybody in safe places, and then he goes and crosses over this brook, and he begins to seek after God. And uh, out of nowhere, this man jumps on him, and they start wrestling. And finally, he realizes that it's the angel of the Lord, and um, as they're in that struggle, thank God, and he, if this was the time that he knew that it would be different. Thank God, if God would show up again, thank God, I'm not going to let him go until I'm changed. Thank first time I was touched and I was moved, but I really wasn't changed. But this time, if God shows up, I'm not going to let go until he changes me. And what I'm preaching about today, if you haven't caught on to it, thank God, I know that a lot of you have had an encounter with God. But I wonder if you had a second encounter with God, where that you really were changed. I mean, it's an encounter. When you have an encounter with God, you never forget it. Praise God. You'll never forget when you first felt the presence of God and you were first touched by the Spirit of God. But uh, sometimes it doesn't really change us a whole lot. Sometimes we need to get that second encounter with God where that we really get changed. And he said, I'm not going to leave here the way that I came. I'm not going to leave here uh, talking the same way I talked and living the same way that I live. Somewhere I'm going to get a hold of God. Thank God. It's what happens to the alcoholic when they come into the presence of God and they really get delivered from alcohol or get delivered from drugs or get delivered from whatever it is, the depression and their oppression. Sometimes we come into the house of God oppressed and depressed and what you really need to do is have an encounter with God and you can walk out of here with your spirits lifted. It's amazing what that encounter with God will do. And here of late, I have watched people have fresh encounters with God and to see the tremendous change in their lives. And some of you that are sitting here today, you know what it is to have that fresh encounter with God and suddenly everything is different. The way I think the way that I deal with my time, the things that I want, the things that I don't want, the things that I used to desire that I don't desire anymore. It's amazing when you get an encounter with God. Thank God. And so I'm not leaving here carrying that load of sin. I'm not leaving here carrying my troubles and my problems. I'm going to leave here in victory. And so Jacob said, when I leave here, thank God, I'm going to be a different man. And sometimes you have to get to that point of desperation. Sometimes life has to kind of overwhelm us to get us to that place. And we have to get uh, driven by some situations and circumstances that makes us just feel like that I've got to get a hold of God. The next morning... All was waiting for Jacob. Thank God. They knew that he had went to have an encounter with God. They knew that he wanted to be alone because he was seeking after something special from God. And so he came out of the, the bushes. Thank God. He's limping. Thank God. He's bloody. His clothes are torn. Thank God. They are coming running and saying, what happened to you, Jacob? And thank God. And he is saying, I just had a, an encounter with God. I just had this awesome experience with God. Thank God. It didn't look like it was too awesome to everybody looking at him. He looked uh, all mangled and bruised up, but deep down there was something that happened to him. Sometimes the agony and the fervency and the, the desperation that you have to come to to get that second touch, to get that second encounter with God is a, is a struggle. And God, sometimes you have to really just kind of uh, make 
um, a scene, so to speak. Thank God he said, but I had an encounter with God. Thank God. And I didn't let go until he changed me. Thank God. I'm a new man. Thank God. Because I am no longer Jacob. God has changed me. I'm not the same old guy I used to be. But my name has been changed. And I am Israel. And I'm a prince with God. And I'm telling you, that's the kind of change that God wants to make in us. That we are not even the same. That people don't see us the same anymore. That second encounter where that you really take hold of God. Jacob was never the same. Thank God. He had a limp. It reminded him of his change. Thank God he had a new name that reminded him that he wasn't the same. The old Jacob was dead and the new prince with God was alive. And it was that second encounter with God that had done it. It was something about having a second encounter. So I've come to remind all of us that every once in a while we need a fresh encounter with God. Hey, God, your job is not your problem. Your neighbor's not your problem. Your wife's not your problem. Your money's not your problem. Hey, God, your problem is you need an encounter with God. Hey, God, if you could get connected with God. Thank God. We will find the energy because sometimes, you know, there is a part of us that wants to do good, but it's just like I just can't muster the strength to do it. And there's a part of us that wants to do bad, and we're just always struggling, and it's just a a war going on. But something about when you have an encounter with God, it's that energy to run and not be weary, to walk and not faint, that energy to say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Something just inside just says, I'm going to keep fighting, I'm going to keep pressing, I'm going to make it happen. Thank God, it's the energy that Paul was talking about when he said, thank God, I came not to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the power of God. Somewhere we need to get into that place with God, that encounter with God where that we can really have a demonstration of the power of God. It's what Jesus was talking about when he said in Luke 10 and 19, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. There is a place where you can so get empowered with God that let come what may, you can tread on serpents. Thank God you can tread on scorpions because we can put the devil under our feet because there is power and there is an energy that God can give us. And so no enemy, no weapon formed against us can prosper. In Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, he said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I'd like to get a fresh Holy Ghost coming up on me, and you shall be witnesses unto me. There is something about, and that I don't think that it's just talking about uh, going out and passing out tracts, although that would be a great thing to do. But I think what it's really past, uh, talking about is that you're going to be a witness because they're going to see the power of the Holy Ghost on you. And it's not going to be just something you're telling somebody about. It's something they're going to feel, something they're going to experience when you talk to them. Because I'm going to have power with God. God is ready to back up uh, every word of his book. Thank God. God is ready to help us. Thank God. And God is ready for us to just realize that all we need to do is just to have breakthrough. Thank God. If we will get a hold and, and not let go until I'm changed. Thank God. I think sometimes we get content with just a touch. And the Lord is wanting us to latch on to him and not let go until we are completely change until we are a new creature until something really has happened in us that makes us totally different because Jacob will never be the same after that second encounter that he had with God there was something that happened to Jacob that day that made him different than he had ever been before he was not the same man and somewhere I need I believe there's some of you that need a fresh encounter with God so that you really can feel that I am not the same that I'm going to look I'm going to live different. I'm going to walk different. I'm going to move different. The psalmist said in Psalms 120 and 1, uh, he said, In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. And so the first thing that happens to us is we get in distress, and we get into situations, and life begins to happen to us. And it's at that time that we decide whether we're going to really put it all in God's hands or whether we're going to just really let it overwhelm us. And so on this Sunday morning, thank God, if you will come here, if you came here with a heavy load, if you came here um, with at your wit's end and wondering what should I do, thank God, what you need to do, Thank God, it's to call on the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous can run into it and they are safe. And there's a haven of rest. There's a place of peace. There's a place where that before 
the crisis is over, before the problem is solved, before the answer comes, that you can enter into a rest. And that is the rest that he wants to give you. Anybody can rest after the problem's over. Anybody can take a heart after the situation's been worked out. But what God wants his people to do is that before the crisis is over, before the storm winds die, before the situation is solved, that I'm just going to praise God anyhow. I'm going to look up, I'm going to lift up, and I'm going to say, God, you're in control. God is saying, come unto me. Come on, he wants you to come to him today. Praise God, cast all your cares on him. Get all of that problems and load and get it off of you. Because I'm telling you, uh, carrying the load that you can't do anything about isn't going to help you anyway. So what you really need to do is get the load off of you and get it on the Lord. Praise God, he's blessed you and he's helped you and he got us here and he's going to take us on. Sometimes I get overwhelmed when I see how God good God has been to me when I see what God has wrought and what God has accomplished it it blows my little pea brain you know because I just can't imagine thank God how we got here but God it's the one that got you here is the one that's going to get you through thank God he didn't bring you this far to let you down he didn't get you started that he don't have a finish praise God he's the author and the finish of your faith he really knows what he's doing and it's going to take it all to make us praise God we love to read about Joseph but I'm telling you it took all of Joseph's life to make the Joseph that we read about in the Bible. If there had never been a time of slavery, if there had never been a time of imprisonment, if there had never been the rejections and all of the things that he went through, he could have never been the wise, compassionate uh, ruler that he became because all of that made Joseph the man that he was. And so, you know, we just want the finished product. But I'm telling you, there's some fire you got to go through. There's some trials that you got to endure. There's some tests that you've got to go through. Because God doesn't do it, thank God, the easy way. God does it in his own way, in his own time. While we're standing today, and so he wants you to cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. And what you need is breakthrough. And I don't think you ever get just a breakthrough and that ends it. I think we have to continually be finding new breakthroughs. Thank God, what you need to do is to get a hold of God and not let go until he blesses you. Thank God, some people never get beyond the first encounter with God. All they, they live on that first encounter. They just remember that first encounter. Thank God. But I'm telling you, there are more and greater encounters to be had. Thank God. It inspires me, and I was up in the prayer rooms to, today praying, and then to listen to Sister Viola over in the other prayer room. I can't really fully understand everything she's saying over there, but, but I hear her break into praise and break into worshiping God and 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 sometimes if we don't watch it we're going to think we're all living off of that experience that we got the first time but do you know you can break through again and again there, there's not just one breakthrough there's not just one victory to be had in prayer there's not just one victory to be had in walking with God and I know in the morning prayers um, some mornings you just feel people breaking through praise God you can just sense that there was a touch. There was something happened there. The prayer goes into a different dimension. And God wants us to understand, thank God, that we need to get beyond that first experience. Thank God. We need, we need to have a second encounter with God. Thank God. And so God, help us today to, to reach for that encounter. Because I'm telling you, some of you, if you could just touch him, everything's going to be all right. He's got his peace passeth all understanding. His grace is sufficient. This really is the best thing there is. Thank God. There is nothing like meeting life and having to deal with life.